All right, up next, comparing fractions with unlike denominators. So now we're gonna be talking more about whether fractions are greater than or less than, which can sometimes be tricky. Figuring out which fraction is bigger than the other when both the numerators and the denominators are different can be really tricky and very unintuitive. I'm not sure what it means by using benchmark. Let's find out. I'm ready to practice. Let's do it. Okay, graph four tenths and three halves on the number line to show how each fraction relates to one. Click on each dot to select an answer. Oh, okay. So now we are gonna be talking about so-called proper and improper fractions, but instead of calling them that, we're gonna be looking at fractions that are bigger than one and fractions that are less than one. We already know that any fraction that has the same number on the top and the bottom is equal to one, right? Any, even if you have something crazy like x squared over x squared, like any fraction that has the same number on the top and the bottom, the same value on the top and the bottom is equal to one. These are all equal to one. And that's something that's sort of drilled into our heads. So now, instead of looking at fractions as proper or improper, we can compare the numerator and the denominator to find out whether a number is greater than one or less than one. How do I know that three over two is this dot right here, whereas four over 10 is the other one way over there? I knew that right away, and it was because I know that if I have some number of cakes or squares or rectangles or whatever, and each one is cut into two, if I have three pieces, that's got to be more than one whole cake, more than one whole square, more than one whole rectangle. It has to be because there are more pieces than one cake or shape could manage on its own. If I cut each one into two, then each shape only has two pieces to give. So if I have three, I need to be using more than one shape. So I know that this one is three over two because it is bigger than one. And I know that four out of 10 is less than one and thus to the left of one. So as a sort of general rule, although I know I like avoiding those, as a sort of general rule, if you have a bigger number on top over a smaller number on the bottom, you're gonna end up getting a value that's greater than one. If you have a smaller number on the top and a bigger number on the bottom, you're gonna be less than one. And of course, as we just said, if you have the same number on the top and bottom, then it's equal to one. This is what this entire lesson is trying to get at, and it's going to be really, really important, especially later when we start talking about multiplication and uh, exponential growth and decay because sort of a spoiler alert for future math if this if you multiply by a number that's less than one your value will decrease if you multiply by a number that's bigger than one your value will increase and this should make sense because if you multiply by one it stays the same so we got those two points and now we need to compare four tenths is less than three over two. Amy compared four over two to five over eight by comparing each fraction to one. Step one, four over two is greater than one. Step two, five over eight is greater than one. Step three, so four over two is greater than five over eight. In which step did Amy make her first mistake? Now, I like that it said first mistake because I can count two mistakes in this problem. Um, and again, remember that one of those common core, I know, I know, one of those common core practice standards that we focus so hard on is being able to critique the reasoning of others, being able to figure out what were they going for and if they made a mistake, where is that mistake? This is essential to building good understanding of these topics. And this is a great example of it. So first off, step one, four over two is greater than one. I would say that is correct. 
Because again, if you have a bigger number on top and a smaller number on the bottom, then it's greater than one. I happen to know that four over two is exactly two, right? Four divided by two, but that's neither here nor there. Where we get into trouble is step two. Five over eight is not greater than one. It's just not. If you have a smaller number on top and a bigger number on the bottom, it means essentially that I have, let's say, a pizza with eight slices and five of them were taken away. Well, there are still some slices left. We don't need a second pizza yet. Five eighths is less than one. But let's go ahead and continue on anyway. Because again, as a teacher, I really like going through my students' work and trying to find all of the mistakes they made not only so that I can give grades accurately, I hate giving grades in general, but that is a topic for another stream, but it also gives me a chance to, to really understand where my students are struggling so that I can give them targeted support. So when you are working with your student or your brother or sister or child or whatever, when you are working with your student, make sure to try to take them through the entire process and find all the mistakes. For example, if I know that both of them are greater than one, for example, does that necessarily mean that four over two is greater than five over eight? If that's all we know, if all we know is that both of these numbers are greater than one, does that by itself tell us that four over two is greater than five over eight? Well, I would say no. It happens to be true, yes, that four over two is greater than five over eight, but the reasoning doesn't follow. I can't say that 500 and 1,000 are both greater than 100, therefore 500 is greater than 1,000. I can't say stuff like that. The only way this comparing to one thing works is if one is bigger and one is smaller. So it looks to me like she made her first mistake in step two. Okay, once again, we are graphing four-thirds and three-fourths to show how each one relates to one. I know that because four-thirds has four pieces, each of which is a third of a shape, it's going to take more than one shape to, to show all of those pieces. So four-thirds is going to be greater than one. It's going to be to the right of one, which means that three-fourths is going to be to the left of one. So four-thirds is greater than three-fourths. Nick compared three-fourths and nine-eighths by first comparing each fraction to one. He says that three-fourths is less than one. So far, so good. I agree. Step two, nine-eighths is greater than one. Also true because nine is a bigger number than eight. If I had a pizza in eight slices and I wanted to eat nine slices of pizza, I would need more than one pizza to make that happen. I would just have to. So yes, that's also correct. Step three, so three-fourths is less than nine-eighths. I agree with that step as well. Looks to me like Nick didn't make a mistake here. And again, this is showing off a, a rule of arithmetic. We're not giving it a name yet because we're not at that point. But what we're talking about is the associative property of greater than or less than. Because we know that one is less than 9 eighths, and because we know that 1 is greater than 3 fourths, we therefore know that 3 fourths is less than 9 over 8. That's a really big deal. Like, this is massive. But it's also not the only way we could have done this, yeah? We didn't have to compare this to 1 to show which one was bigger, which one was smaller. We could have just said, well, three-fourths is what over eight? Well, I got to double the number of pieces total, right? So if I have four total pieces and I've got three of them and each piece splits into half, then the three pieces will become six pieces. Three-fourths is the equivalent of six over eight, which is definitely less than nine over eight. That's one of the reasons why a common denominator is so useful, because it allows you to just count up 
How many eighths do I have here? How many eighths do I have up there? Which one's greater? Nine eighths is more than six eighths. Either way, Nick did not make a mistake here. Good job, Nick. And that is compare fractions using benchmark. Let's move on.